Oh, morning everybody. Fantastic to see you all again. So, in this video, I'm talking all about the 24 to 70 lens, which is such a versatile lens and everyone should have one in the bag. Now, the equivalent to this is something like an 18 to 55 on a APS-C crop sensor, but I'm showing you today on my Nikon Z7, this 24 to 70, which is just such an amazing lens and it's interesting because this is the only sort of native lens that i've got from my z7 at the moment because there's no other z lenses out then i've been using it a lot more and i just want to talk through shooting some shots with it and i thought that'd make an interesting video so i'm going to take you back to yesterday morning it was amazing with some hoar frost we're at home fell in the lake district and it was absolutely beautiful Wanna go out and face the cold, but it's a really good time for a monologue. Can't let this pass. I find it hard to breathe. So I'm here for four days and I'm working on a really exciting project, which I'll tell you about later. But I thought whilst I'm working on it as well, it'd be really good to do this Sunday's video and it would be wrong not to in this just amazing hoar frost that we've got on the trees at the moment. So I'm gonna have a look around. I'm on my way to Home Fell, which has got some beautiful silver birch. Hopefully we'll still have the home, the hoar frost there. See what I can find. It's absolutely stunning. Look at this. <laughs> I wanted to take this shot so many times it's never worked and you've just come a little bit later there was some amazing mist in the valley here and for once I've been able to isolate this tree and just find a really good composition and it's worked really well now I've used a medium length focal length on it I think it was around about 50 millimeters to try and sort of emphasize the the, the, the whole scene here I've tried sort of different um, focal lengths but there's no there's no sort of progression through the foreground here. So I find that when I have something on, the, on a precipice like this and it sort of drops off, that I want to sort of put emphasis on the tree, but also bring in the mountains in the background and try and compress the perspective a little bit. So that's worked. And now, because of all this hoarfrost, I'm going to try and find some backlit trees and shoot some backlit trees because it seems to me that that's, that's the thing to do. And if I do find any good vistas, then I'll get them. But as the sun's come up, it's got a little bit harsher the light. I think I'm better focusing on detail now and just getting some of this beautiful, beautiful hoar frost. <sighs> it really doesn't get any better than this. Oh, it really doesn't get any better than this. It's really hard to understand that losing you now is the only choice for me. Someday I rode so cross before And someday I rode so sure I'll find it sure If you've never been this tired Then you've never been this in love When you feel there is time for us Then I'll be by the same old road Look at this, this is so amazing. So I am in Home Fell. It's really close to the car park. It's a really well-known location. These trees I've shot in all different um, conditions. And I'll probably show you a few of the photos, but this is probably one of the nicest I've ever seen it. I've taken a shot because as you can see, probably behind me, it's dropping off so quickly, the, the hoar frost on the, on the tree. Um, but I've tried to position it. So I've got the, the elements of the tree just not covering up the snow in the background so much. It's difficult to get it all right, but I've just tried to position it a little bit so it's like that. And wow, this is so gorgeous. The detail on the edge of these branches is so beautiful. In fact, I might do some close-up detail as well. Oh, I love conditions like this and it's so hot. <laughs> I'm actually cooking here. I've got so many layers on. Right, right, I'm gonna take this and then coffee time and then I'm going to just try and get some more close-up and find trees that have been in the shade over there in fact. Minutes ago you were still mine feels like I'm drifting too far from the line 
Right, so whew, it's the next day now, and the reason I didn't carry on vlogging yesterday is that I, th this project that I'm doing, it's a, it's it's a, a video project that I'm doing. That I'll tell you a little bit more about um, at the end of this this video. But I um, was running really low on battery, so I had to stop vlogging and carry on with this other th this other video project. So anyway, it's the next day now. It's a lot colder, um, and I'm down by. Bleat on, but the conditions weren't great yesterday because the, the, the sun melted all the hoarfrost and then it was just blue sky. But now it's looking fantastic, and you can see here at Bleat on, it is amazing. So, I want to get back to the actual point of the video, which is just shooting at sort of um, medium length, so using your 24 to 70. So, I've got my 24 to 70 on my Nikon Z7 here, and yeah, this is, this is a fantastic lens as well. And quickly, I'm actually gonna take this quickly because can you see the light coming there? And we've got this amazing line here, which just is so good. I actually first thought that, that somebody had actually been on a sledge or something when I came down here. I was a bit disappointed, but these are like, almost like crack lines that have gone through and created this amazing looking um, ice. So what I'm doing is I'm, just grabbing that light. Anyway, right, there's some more light coming out. So I'm, I'll, I might keep talking to you, but I'm just gonna try and get these shots. So there's these foreground rocks here. I'm sounding a bit overexcited. There's these foreground rocks here. And um, there's also some really close up stuff here, but there's these foreground rocks, this line here, and then I'm waiting for light to come on the background sort of hills. And this is Harrison Stickle in the background, which looks amazing with all the snow on it. So this is where the 24 to 70 lens comes in because when you're trying to emphasize the mountains in the background, and Alex Nail talked about this a little bit in the video last week, then using, you know, anything above sort of 40 millimeters to make, you know, and beyond, you start to really make those mountains seem a little bit bigger. So I'm, I'm, I'm currently shooting at around 40 millimeters. So, so one of the things I want to show you is when you've got a slightly longer lens on, it's the same with wide angle as well, but um, and you've got some foreground elements or mid-ground elements, then it's really important to think about um, just moving your, ca your camera. So if I just take it off here and just show you now, if I, if I move this down like this, you can see that the separation between these rocks here and the background changes quite significantly. So that's a very different photo to that, and I'm not moving very far. So you've got to really experiment with height in your images. Now I've mentioned this before, but it's really, really important because sometimes you, you, you get to somewhere, you think that looks okay, but just by moving down that little bit, in fact, I've just done this now, and I think I need to be a little bit lower on my tripod. So really concentrate on your height when, you, when you're shooting at, um, with your 24 to 70 lens and just think really carefully about what difference it makes to the sort of depth perception through the image because you can either go high and get more foreground in because you might want to emphasize the, a path or something or you can get low and, and compress that foreground if, if there's a lot of things that are the same like a lake or something like this where we've got you know, a lot of stuff the same. In this case, we've got this line which helps. And a really nice bit of ice behind me. Oh, it's so chilly here. Been out for about three hours in the same spot, and 
when you're not walking it gets so cold okay so what I wanted to do is tell you a little bit about you know what I'm filming here because it's quite exciting really so it's a project that I've been working on for a good few months now and it is what I've called a landscape photography masterclass and it's going to be a tutorial series to take you from like just a camera owner so just getting your camera um, whether you're a beginner or intermediate to a landscape photographer and, and producing really great photographs that you actually want to put on your wall and I've really thought about it I've really thought about all the different things that you might want to know it's quite different than my YouTube videos because it's more going into the real detail of how to use your camera all about exposure focus tripods setting up your tripods all the accessories that you might need using wide angle lens this is what I'm filming at the moment um, using your 24 to 70 which is what this this video is about this, this vlogs about um, and your long lens using filters using exposure bracketing all Lightroom techniques, printing techniques, and how to print. So it's a whole range, all the way from taking your shot to processing it and then printing it out. And I'm really excited about it. I, I think it'll be launched in, in maybe a month's time, something like that, um, maybe a little bit longer. And um, it's gonna be available to purchase um, on my website. Now, what I wanted to do is, for anybody that's really interested in it, if you sign up, um, and there's going to be a link in the description below, and say that you're interested in buying it when it comes out or knowing more about it, then I'll give you 10% off when I release it. So anybody that's on that list will get a discount code of 10%. And um, yeah, hope, hopefully that'll I'll help everyone. And it's, it's things that I've wanted to do that haven't really naturally fallen into doing vlogs because they're just a lot more narrative, a lot more detail, a lot more going into the specifics of the camera, which is something that I didn't really do in my vlogs because my vlogs are more sort of inspirational. Right, the lights come on the mountain in the background now, so I need to grab this shot. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about 24 to 70 and um, why I think it's such a good lens. So I'm a great user of super wide angles. I, I use a 16 to 35 millimeter on full frame and the 10 to 24 on my um, Fuji all the time. I love it. I love just that sort of just different look it gives. Um, and But that doesn't mean that the 24 millimeter isn't wide enough. Um, you can do some really amazing wide angle shots with the 24 millimeter and a top trick when you're using the 24 end of your 24 to 70 lens is to do it in portrait. So you can see I've got two shots set up here, one on the Fuji X-T3, which has got my 10 to 24 on it, 10 millimeters, and that's in landscape. And it's, it's, a, it's a quite a different shot than this one. And I'll show you both of them. That's um, at 24 millimeters on my 24 to 70 on my Nikon Z7. Um, but by, by doing it in portrait, you can still get quite a lot of depth to the image. And also, it's good for Instagram. So, what I've got is, I've got my camera set on um, 24 millimeters. I'm focusing on the mountains. Now, it's really tight at 24 millimeters to get everything in focus. That's an advantage of super wide angle, because on, on, on the other one, I can shoot at about f11 and get you know, to about that close in focus by focusing on the mountains. At 24 millimeters, it's around about 1.4, 1.5 meters. So I'm pushing the limits of what I can get in focus without going um, to a really high um, aperture like F16 or something and then getting a lot of diffraction. But I'll try it. I'm gonna try shooting at F16, have a look at it, but I'm also gonna focus on the foreground as well. And if need be, I'll focus stack the image. Um, I've been waiting for about an hour actually just to just to see, um, following my instructions from last week's video, um, just to see if the clouds are gonna come over and they keep sort of promising to come over and then they disappear. So it's a bit of a shame really, but it's worth waiting. I like the fact that it's in shade here because the sun's directly behind me. And if the sun, and, it's, and I'm lucky there's some trees up there that are sheltering it. And if the sun um, was on the foreground here, it would look good, but they'd have all my shadows. So I wouldn't be able to shoot it.
Right, I've stopped here because I just want to show you this scene behind me. So you can see that it's a bit untidy at the foreground here and it's not really obviously anything to shoot. But if you sort of get in a little bit closer, and that's where the 70 millimeter end of the 24 to 70 is just so good. And, um, you know, I, 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 I think that it's great when you've got a scene like this at, in the middle of the day, there's not a huge amount to take. You know, there's everything's maybe starting to get a bit flat light, but by focusing in on little elements like this wall running down the mountain here, you can get something quite special. Now we've got this dark cloud here, you've got that wall running down, we've got another wall there, and just a moment ago there was two sheep that walked through. So I grabbed a shot of that and I'll show you I'll show you I'll show you that shot. But it's then just a question of going in at 70 millimeters. As long as you've not got anything really close to you, you can shoot around about F6, F7. Um, you've got to be careful if you've got something reasonably close because obviously at 70 millimeters, your um, depth of field drops quite significantly compared to 24 millimeters. And um, yeah, it's just a question of picking it out. And I, I really like the snow up there, you know, the, the, the dark clouds just coming over and then the mountains in the distance. So I'm just, I've just got sort of a square uh, there. So I'm just gonna try it like that because it's, um, it's middle of the day. And yeah, I've got it on 70 millimeters. ISO 64. And it makes it a very, very interesting shot compared to what it would have been if you know I wasn't using a a 70 millimeter lens you really need to pay attention to cloud as well because cloud can make a really big change in the composition of, of what you're shooting you know look at the shapes of the clouds and how the clouds are forming as they're going over the mountain you can see the cloud that now at the moment is just sort of forming differently because just a 10 second difference in that shutter going off can make a, a significant difference to to the actual composition and the final image that you get I hope you enjoyed that. I had a fantastic time in the lakes making some videos for my masterclass. And I hope you enjoyed the 24 to 70 tutorial as well. And I hopefully gave you some top tips for, for using your 24 to 70 lens. It certainly is a super versatile lens. So, you know, if you want to make your bag a bit lighter, then just go out with that lens and you'll get some fantastic shots. Now, you didn't think I was going to get to 100,000 subscribers and not have a giveaway. So I've got a giveaway and nope, it's not my camera, <laughs> but it is something not quite as good, but something that's really, really good. Um, and I'm, I'm looking to partner with Benro and Benro have been so kind to provide a ball head, a B2 ball head for a tripod and obviously the tripod itself as well. So this is a Mac um, 3 TMA 28C carbon fiber tripod. It's an awesome tri tripod. The ball head and tripod together are worth about $500. This is it. This is mine version of it. So this is, this is my Mac 3 um, tripod and head. It goes really high. It's pretty light for, for a big tripod and it's just fantastic. It's really sturdy and um, means that you can get fantastic landscape shots. So if you want a chance of winning this tripod and ball head, then all you've got to do is comment in the video below and you, your comments got to be what you think about the 24 to 70 lens. Um, so it can be what you think of it, what you might do with it, why you think it's the, a good lens, why you think it might not be a good lens and, and, and what, what other lens you may be, maybe think is a better lens as a more versatile lens. Um, I certainly love it. So. You drop your comment below 
make sure you like the video and if you're not subscribed then make sure you subscribe to the video and if you do all those then you'll have a chance of winning the tripod and ball head and I'm packing for ice on the go tomorrow morning at 7am so I better get on with it because it's late now until next Sunday bye Wanna go out and face the cold, but it's a really good time for a monologue. Can't let this pass, I find it hard to breathe.